for those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I want to spend a few minutes today providing a recap for week 15. Week 15 begins May 20th, so this is going to be our final week for completing our thesis paper. So to complete our thesis paper, the last thing that we'll be focusing on for this week primarily is going to be the introduction paragraph, the conclusion paragraph, and the abstract. According to our schedule, we want to try to complete the results and discussion section by the 17th of May. But of course, if anything is still uh, in the works, if you are still working on completing your paper, you can also spend this last week uh, completing whatever it is that you need to complete. Take a look at the introduction paragraph uh, notes that I've provided here in this link. Make sure that you begin with a hook, that you provide the context of the problem. Think of the question words in terms of what the problem is, how it became a problem, why is it a problem, maybe when or where is it a problem, perhaps with whom is it a problem. You don't have to address, of course, all of those question words, but do think of the question words in terms of how you want to present uh, the problem and uh, think of developing three to four sentences within the introduction paragraph that explains or provides detail or describes the context of the problem. I would include at least one citation in the introduction paragraph to support the problem. And later, uh, we'll talk about the slides where you can also include that same citation uh, as you begin your presentation. The last sentence of your introduction paragraph should be your thesis statement, which should present a possible solution to the problem that you've presented in the prior sentences of the introduction paragraph. The introduction paragraph is going to be your first paragraph of your paper, approximately 250 words, and then immediately have the first heading, a level two heading that begins the first section of your literature review. Remember to conclude the literature review with a transitional paragraph. Make sure that you include in that transitional paragraph restating the thesis statement, presenting or summarizing again the problem, reminding the reader what the problem is under, uh, be, under your or based on your research, and then segue into the research questions. I would conclude the transitional paragraph with a closing statement as well. I would not uh, conclude the paragraph with the research questions, maybe just one simple sentence to kind of uh, close the idea. The conclusion paragraph is going to be the final paragraph of your entire paper. So in the conclusion paragraph, you'll want to again reword and restate your thesis statement. Then you want to provide the significance or relevance or the big picture that relates to your thesis statement, that basically relates to your whole paper. And then conclude with a closing statement or perhaps a famous quote. The third paragraph that we want to work on this week is the abstract, and this is going to be on a dedicated page. If you're using the template that was provided to you at the beginning of the semester, you have a page there towards the beginning for the abstract. So the abstract goes on its own page. It's one paragraph, approximately 250 words. The abstract is the only paragraph that does not include an indentation. And the abstract basically summarizes your entire paper. Do take a look at the notes from this page here that I've provided, but basically you want to introduce the problem that you're researching or the purpose of your study. You want to summarize the way in which you collected the data, your participants. You want to provide the main findings of your study your, and your general conclusions. Think of the abstract as providing enough information to help the reader determine whether or not they want to read the abstract, or I'm sorry, if they want to read the whole paper, right? So the abstract basically is a snapshot of the whole paper, and it should stand alone. It should provide enough information without having read the entire document to give the reader a good idea about what your paper is all about. 
Now, when you're preparing for your mock presentation, right, to be eligible to participate in the mock presentation, you will need to have completed a thesis paper and turned in by 12 p.m. May 24th. It does need to be printed. One copy is enough. And make sure it's either stapled or in a manila folder. I'll be in, my, in the classroom between 11 to 12 to receive your papers. If you have it finished beforehand, of course, I'll, I'll accept it any time before, before May 24th. When you're preparing for your, uh, for your mock presentation, remember that you're going to be presenting for 20 minutes with a 10-minute question and answer session with the examiners. Choose an app that you want to use, whether it's PowerPoint, Prezi, Canva, or some other app for presenting your ideas. Take a look at this video called Life After Death by PowerPoint. This gives you a lot of good tips in what to do and what not to do when it comes to including text and images and just visually how it should look. So do take a look at this video. Prepare for your mock presentation by including a title slide at the beginning of your presentation. Make it visually appealing. Use a nice design throughout your, uh, throughout your PowerPoint. Let's say if you're going to be using a PowerPoint presentation, make sure that you have a design that's consistent throughout the, the presentation. In the title slide, I would include your name, the subject, thesis seminar, the date. I would include the date that you're presenting. And I think that's the main thing, probably the, the name of the university, I would include that as well. Beyond that, you uh, can use your imagination and what you want to include there in your title presentation. Then you want to begin introducing the problem and the purpose of your study. Probably one slide, maybe two slides will be enough for this purpose. I would include one citation to support the problem that you're researching. And presenting the problem and the purpose should last approximately 30 seconds to one minute. Then continue reviewing your literature review. Assign approximately eight minutes in doing so. I would follow basically the same order in which you presented your literature review in your paper. Conclude the literature review by reminding the audience again of the researchable problem and then introduce your research questions. Then you want to go into the method section explaining very generally your participants, the instruments and procedure, the way in which you collected your data, and how you analyzed your information. The method section should last no more than two minutes. Then we want to present the results in discussion, allow approximately nine minutes to do so. Pay very close attention to how you're balancing the results in discussion so you're not having too much of one and not enough of the other. Present the results before you discuss it. Present the results before you interpret your findings. Include visuals, any tables or figures, even uh, some of the figures or tables that you used in your paper, perhaps you need to modify them depending on how much information you're including in those tables, depending on how it looks on, on the slide. They don't have to be identical. It depends on how you want to present your information. It's different how you're presenting information in your mock presentation or your final oral defense uh, versus how you're presenting those in the written paper. You do want to address the main results, the main things that you want to discuss. We want to focus on information or data that is the most surprising, the most interesting, the most insightful. After you present your results and discussion, again, allow approximately nine minutes to do so. We want to offer some kind of conclusion. Now, in the conclusion, this is where you are explaining the final implications of your study. Think of the conclusion paragraph, generally speaking. We're uh, going to explain the uh, significance or the relevance of your paper. 
and and then we want a final closing statement or a final quote to conclude our presentation. Some general notes to consider for preparing for your mock presentation. You may use note cards if they do not interfere or distract from the delivery of your presentation. So make sure that when you're practicing, you, you can glance down at your cards, but make sure that you're, you're not so focused on their cards that you're not connecting with the audience. Remember, this is a presentation, an in-person presentation, so you're going to be trying to maintain good eye contact with your audience throughout your presentation. So make sure that if you're glancing down at your notes that you're coming back and maintaining eye contact with the audience. Bring a bottle of water. If you're nervous, it's going to be helpful to have some water there available uh, if necessary. Try to practice before you present. Time yourself. Maybe even record your presentation. You can certainly record the mock presentation, but if you're practicing, I would record yourself and go back and listen, preferably even with a video, so you can also see some of your nonverbal communication as you're practicing your presentation. But do practice keeping time. That is, as you are presenting your presentation or you're practicing your presentation, that you're also keeping track of time so that you get used to the time allotments for each of the different sections of your presentation. The, si the slides of your presentation are meant to support what you're saying. The slide should not be a distraction. This also relates to the amount of text that you're including in your slides. If you have too much text, then the audience is going to be more focused probably trying to read the slide and not paying attention to you, or maybe they're just listening to you and not even paying attention to all the text that you've included in the slide. So use text sparingly. Use bullet points sparingly. All right, so it would be perfectly fine if you don't include any bullet points throughout your entire presentation within the slides of your presentation. Try to mix the text with visuals throughout your presentation, and you'll want to bring a computer and make sure you test the equipment before you present. Okay, so for the mock presentation, I would suggest getting with your classmates that are going to present the same day and just bring one computer and just, just manage all of the PowerPoint, all the files on the one computer so we don't have to spend time um, moving or changing computers just so that we can move to the next presentation in a timely fashion. All right, so here's some notes that, uh, these are some notes and some tips that I would think about as you're preparing for the mock presentations that are going to be beginning May 27th. Monday, May 27th is going to be our first mock presentation. I'm going to ask that all of you that are scheduled for that day to present and be present throughout the presentation so you can also observe some of your classmates and observe some of the, the feedback that's provided to uh, everyone for that for that particular day. It's not required to observe any more than the day that you're scheduled to present, but certainly if you want to observe more days, you're certainly uh, entitled to do so. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop there. If you do have any questions, you want me to look at your PowerPoint before you, you present, uh, let me know. Otherwise, we'll take a look at it during the mock presentation. I'll give you feedback, not only of the presentation itself and how it looks, but also your delivery, the way in which you present your presentation. And the mock presentation will also include some questions that you can anticipate re receiving uh, during, your, uh, during your oral defense. Okay, so I look forward to seeing your presentations. And again, reach out to me if you do have any questions.